What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a tool for creating AI models that you can use inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so this is Meshi AI. Meshi AI is a tool designed to help you create 3D models using different prompts and artificial intelligence. I was first introduced to this by Daniel Tal at the Brightman SketchUp Summit. I liked it so much that I reached out to them and partnered with them on a video because I think it's a really cool tool. So uh, this is a paid promotion. It is something that I initiated, but it is something where I really liked what it could create. But I always want to be 100% upfront about that. All right, so this is your Discover page, and this is going to give you access to a bunch of models that have been created by others using Meshi. So you can click on these, you can check them out, and you can actually download them as well if you decide that you want to do that. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff in here, and these are all completely AI-generated models. But in this case, we're less worried about the Discover page and more about creating our own models. And so you've got four options in here. I'm going to focus on the second one. But the first option is text to 3D, meaning you can create models from like a text prompt. I prefer to use images. I find that works a whole lot better, but you've also got options to generate textures and also generating images from prompts. But we're gonna go to image to 3D. And so the way this is gonna work is you've got this option over here on the left-hand side of the page to drop your image in here. If you clicked over here, you could go to the text to 3D. We want the image to 3D. And in particular, I'm going to drag in an image of a sofa. So let's just pick a random sofa. And so I like this image because it's clear. So we'll go ahead, we'll go to the website, we'll pull down an image of the sofa. And if you can get images of a couple different directions, it's a good idea to try to do that just so you can give the AI a little bit more data. But we're going to click and drag and we're going to create a or we're going to grab an image of this one and we're going to grab an image of this one. So I've got the fronts and the backs of this sofa. Well, now what we want to do is we want to take those images and we want to drag them in here. And so you can do this with a singular image, right? You could take this front model right here and do the singular image. And by the way, I may as well talk about it now. So this is all credits based. So um, there's a free version, which uh, you can try. You get a hundred credits right here. There's a few other features that don't work. Like I don't think the background removal works and things like that. But um, if nothing else, you ought to go give this a try and just see if it creates anything cool for you. You can do that with the free um, option right here, but there's also a pro version, which gives you more credits and some additional features. Um, there's a studio as well, but for most of the people that watch this channel, I think the pro is probably all that you would really need. Um, and so I will link to that in the notes down below. As always, I will note when that is an affiliate link, which this one is. So if you do purchase through that link, I do receive a commission, but um, you can definitely give the free plan a try and see if it creates anything you can actually use first before you really commit to anything like that. But um, basically what that means is that means that you get a certain number of credits that you can use for model generation. And so um, there's different parts and pieces in here, right? There's the initial mesh creation, which is going to be 10 credits. And then later on, we're going to texture it as well. But notice there's this option here for multi-view. So what multi-view does is it's going to allow you to upload additional images of different parts of this model or different views of the model. So in this case, I'm gonna bring in this view and I'm going to bring in this view. Now, note that this will go through and it will try to generate a model using just what you give it. So if you did just have a front view, it would still try to create a model. It actually does a pretty good job. The other thing I like to do is click on this option right here to remove background, which I think is only available with the pro version. But now you can set what name it's going to be, other things like that. So um, I think your models have to be uh, Creative Commons if you're on the free version, but you can do private if you're on the pro version. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to click on generate. And so the first thing this does is this generates four versions of a 3D mesh that you can pick from. So it's going to go through and it's going to try to figure out what this sofa might look like and it's going to give you four different options and while we're waiting on this one we can scroll down and look at this one that it created right here so notice how this one gave me four different mesh options on here for what that chair might look like and then you pick one of those options and it'll kind of move forward so it allows you to pick the one where the ai has kind of done everything the best. And so notice how it has two out of the four created in here. And um, so it does this pretty quickly, but we can kind of rotate around, take a look at this and figure out which one 
we like the best. And usually to me, it's kind of down to the details and kind of like the smoothness of different parts of the models and things like that. Like sometimes they can get a little wrinkly and other things. Um, a lot of the time, the textures will kind of cover that up. But in this case, I think the best option for me is probably going to be this first one right here. So I'm just going to click on that. Now, one thing to pay attention to here, you can do this however you want. Um, you might play around with it kind of both ways, but basically what this does is this gives you the ability to pick the kind of mesh that it's going to create. So you can pick a mesh that's quad topology. You can pick a mesh that's triangles and you can also tell it, okay, go nuts and put as many polygons in here as you want, or you can set it to something more fixed. What I have found generally speaking is that I have better luck when I tell it to go ahead and create the quad topology and kind of limit the number of polys in here, there's also an option in there to remesh it a little bit later. So um, you can tell it to take the mesh that it creates and create something simpler. But in this situation, I'm going to say, okay, create this with a fixed poly count. We'll allow it to do 30 K polys for right now. We might bring that down later. And so there's also an option here for generate PBR maps. And sure, we can go ahead and do that. And so notice how this tells me, okay, it's going to be 10 credits to go ahead and complete the generation and create a texture. And it's going to take two minutes. So we're going to click on confirm and it's going to go through and it's going to take this model and it's going to um, create it using the poly count that we set. And it's going to set um, a, an actual texture image. So it's going to use AI to generate those texture images. More on that in a minute. All right, so now let's go in and let's inspect what this has created. And so there's a few different things that you're going to want to pay attention to when you take a look at this model. So first off, if you don't like the texture this generates, there is an option in here for free retry. And it's the same with the mesh creation too. So if I click in here, right, notice how there's an option for free retry and you get four free retries on anything like this. So it gives you the option to go back through. And if you just don't like what it created at all, and you can't do anything with it, you can do the free retry and try again. So that's definitely something that's worth paying attention to. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to highlight an option that we have in here, which is the texture edit. But First off, let's take a look at the mesh this creates. So this actually comes through and it creates this like really clean quad geometry in here, right? So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's people out there that are like huge topology nerds that'll tell me that the topology is actually not all that good. But from a mesh standpoint, this is actually a really smooth mesh if I was to bring it straight into SketchUp. So I'm um, just something that's worth paying attention to, but you can preview um, the base color maps. You can preview it with the PBR maps, and you can also see the different maps by clicking on these options right here. And so the only thing that's a bummer is this is what the texture looks like from a UV standpoint. So going through and manually editing that would be um, not really the easiest thing in the world. That's why you're kind of limited to what the AI engine can do right now. But notice how, for example, this came in here and this actually generated some things that are kind of weird that we want to try to fix. And I will say that I am generally using this for more like, uh, for more context models and things like that. Like I want this sofa to be close enough that you can tell it's that product is all that I really want it to be. But there's this cool new feature called texture edit in here. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go through and we need to fix this. And so there's a couple tools in here to try to do that. I don't really use the AI texture edit. That allows you to pick an area and then add a prompt, but I have a really hard time getting the prompt to give me what I want. I use this brush tool mostly, and there's a couple good options. So the first one is just this healing tool. And what this healing tool does is it tries to just automatically fix something like this. That actually did a pretty good job. I might drag over this piece again right here, but that gave me a pretty good result. And again, with an AI generated model like this one, I'm not really trying to get it perfect. I'm trying to save the time of modeling this sofa and be able to visually indicate it inside of my model without having to do that remodeling. But there is a tool in here, which I really like, which is the stamp tool. And this works like the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. What you can do is you can um, hold control and left click in order to set a point. But notice how I can use this in order to brush over top right here. So you got to be a little bit careful, but you can use this in order to kind of brush this out. So you're sampling part of this model right here and you can brush out imperfections. 
And so once you're done, you can either trash out and remove changes or you can click on apply. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that right here. I know this is a little lighter than we'd like it to be, but I think it's close enough for this demonstration. Um, and you could go over it with the brush tool again, using the healing tool in order to try to fix this even more like this. And again, if you don't like what it generates, you can just click on the button right here in order to remove it. And you can always go back to your original texture as well. And what I would like to see in the future is I would like to see some kind of like a blend function added in here. But this does a pretty decent job of cleaning up these AI textures. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to click on apply right here. We'll do the same thing over here. So I might start with the healing tool and then do a little bit more cleanup with the stamp tool like this. So this is actually a pretty decent tool set for cleaning up textures. The other thing you should pay attention to is don't worry too much about what's going on in areas where you can't see right? Like what this is doing is this is trying to generate a texture on the bottom. Um, no one's looking at the bottom of your model anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But just be aware that it can do some weird things, especially on the underside of models. But then once we're done, we can click on the option to save to model. That's going to save those texture changes to our 3D model right here. Well, then once we're done with that, and it's going to go through and it's going to finalize that retexturing. And so for me, this is way faster than me actually going through and modeling this out myself. But now what I want to do is I want to download it and bring it into SketchUp. So I'm going to click on the download button right here. Um, and one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to resize it. You're going to want to resize it based on the height. So you just need to figure out the dimensions of that sofa. And in this case, we're just going to say the dimensions of the sofa are, I'll call it three foot, six inches. So we're just going to go to inches. We'll just type in 42. Okay. And so for your file type, I prefer the GLB usually. Um, you can get the USDZ to come in with the textures. The STL will download, but it doesn't have the textures with it. So I like the GLB because it has the textures associated with it. But we're going to go ahead and we're just going to download the sofa model. Notice how that's going to download. And then we can go ahead and we can bring that in to our SketchUp model. So to do that, we're just going to do a file import right here. We're going to pick up this GLB or we're going to click on import. And so when we do that, it's going to bring in a mesh that looks like this. And so I'm just going to move it over a little bit right here. Now it does come in with kind of like these parts and pieces in here like this. Um, what I've found actually is I mean, it comes in kind of nested. So if you look in the outliner, it comes in with like multiple different nested pieces in here. Um, I did try going through and kind of like softening all of these edges. What I actually found is if I go down to the very base level and I just explode this base level, what it does is it'll get rid of that, um, that component definition right in the middle and it kind of smooths out this geometry. And especially uh, with heavy poly counts, this might take a second for it to go through and do this. So just be a little bit patient when you first do that explode. But now if I click off of it, notice how this actually came in as pretty smooth geometry. So just like exploding at that very base level cleans up that geometry because the soften smooth edges function doesn't quite work the way that I would like it to when you bring this stuff in. But um, so this actually did a really good job. So if I take a look at this. This looks like that sofa. And I, I love that it kind of picked up the back detail right here. So I think the areas where we did our text texture cleanup are very not noticeable inside of here. So I think overall this looks really good. Now, one thing I do want to note about this is you should probably go in and double check the dimensions of this object when you do this, right? Because we set the height, but we didn't really set the depth. And because Meshi doesn't go through and like measure this, right? It's just using images in order to create an AI model. And so it's usually a good idea to go in and double check your dimensions. So you can usually just pull those off of the website so you can figure out your depth is, it looks like 43 and a half inches. Um, and then you've got your height in here as well. And so most of the time what I'll do is I'll just take the scale tool and I'll just kind of scale this back a little bit. So I'll just make sure that we scale it to 43.5 inches 
right here. So that'll make it a little bit narrower like this. Um, so then it's closer to the proper height. And then I'll do the same thing with the bounding box right here. I'll just scale it to 31.5 inches right here in order to get the proper height. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It just needs to be close enough that you're actually representing the physical dimensions of the sofa. So in this case, this one is 82.75 inches long. So we'll just resize it right here. But now we've resized it to that proper size. And notice how there's not a whole lot of like deformation or anything like that in here, um, but just double checking your dimensions when you bring this in so that you're sure it's actually representative of something that actually makes sense is always a good idea when you're dealing with AI models. And so looking at this, this is more than good enough to use as a context model inside my overall house like this. So I could totally take this object and just drop it in here and it'll just work as that particular sofa like this. So, I mean, even looking at uh, some of the other stuff that I've pulled in out of this SketchUp 3D Warehouse, um, this is a little bit more detailed, actually. So, um, I would recommend that you always do that thing where you uh, put these in a furniture group and then you tag that group so that you can toggle this stuff on and off. But overall, for using something like this in my models, I think this is definitely an effective tool. So, overall, I'm really enjoying where this is going. This can save you a ton of time. Um, I know this technology is still in development and things like that, but I'm really interested to see where this goes. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about AI models and meshy AI? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.